Hey Thrive Loud listeners, this is Allie. This is Kayla. And this is Kelsey. And we're the trio that really gets things done here on Thrive Loud. We have a great episode coming up today, but first we need your support. For starters, please subscribe to Thrive Loud on either iTunes or Overcast. If you're an iTunes listener, give us a rating and write what you like about the show. And if you're an Overcast listener, make sure to click that little gold star to recommend our show. If you want to learn more about future episodes, upcoming guests, and other great things happening with Thrive Loud, go to thriveloud.com and fill out the Get Connected form at either the top or bottom of the page. Thanks again, and And let's get on with the show. This episode is brought to you by Hinge Consulting. If you're doing business on Amazon and you need to overcome the obscurity of that marketplace, Hinge Consulting will lay out the game plan that works best for your business. Hingeconsulting.co. Success hinges on well-executed strategies. Hinge Consulting delivers on them. Today on Thrive Lab. In coaching, you're really getting the, into the psychology of somebody's mindset and really bringing questions forward to them that help them understand who they are and help them transform into what they want to be. Welcome everyone to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. Today on Thrive Loud, I bring you an incredible individual, one of the most fun, energetic people you'll ever come across, the founder of Enterprise Sales Institute, a sales and leadership coach extraordinaire, a spectacular co-facilitator, I might add, having done it a couple of times with her, a huge hip hop fan and a Philadelphia area native. Donna Valente. Donna, how are you today? Oh my God. I love that um, intro. It was awesome. Thank you so much. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's the early part of the new year. I, I think this will this will air a couple of months into the new year, but hey, we recorded at the new year. So happy new year. It's always a good greeting for everybody. Awesome. Uh, the Thrive Lab listeners need to know this, that that I seem to affiliate myself with a crazy group of people. And, and I not only say crazy group because they're amazing and unbelievable and smart and intelligent and can motivate and coach and lead at a level like you've never dealt with, but they can be crazy just like I can be crazy. And, and Donna and I, we, we, we bonded on the crazy factor, um, mostly because we have this incredible vision of knowing both from that consulting end of what you need to do to get stuff done and from a coaching end. And that is why she and I connected several years ago. She has not only attended workshops of mine, she has helped co-facilitate and been an amazing uh, facil- facilitator with me and is one of the better minds you will see as it comes to figuring out how to really take a sales team and perform to levels that are out of this world. And that is why she has created the Enterprise Sales Institute and why she is a networker extraordinaire and an amazing connector. And I'm going to stop talking nice about her because I'm going to let her tell her story. Isn't that why we're here today? That sounds like a good idea. Well, it's partly why we're here. I mean, I think that uh, it's good for people to know the context of how we how we first met and uh, our love fest and our (laughs) crazy side with going to SOB in New York and meeting the only Antonique Smith. Which and was, meeting her with pictures. Yes, so. well, well, not only pictures. We, it was it was definitely one of the more interesting evenings that I've ever experienced. But we had a, we did have a lot. It was of fun. definitely an evening filled with courage, and uh, I, I think that the the thing that I would connect it to with sales is that when I came to that uh, phobia workshop, um, I had in mind and told everybody we are going to SOBs tonight, and I am going to meet Antoinette Swift. And so that when we got there and I got us in the front, up front and personal, sitting next to her mother and her family and ended up meeting her and getting you a personal picture was like the highlight of my life. Yeah, it was it was pretty weird because I, I had to descri- explain to my wife. She goes, how did you get with this person? I go, I just met this woman, Donna Valente. And I think she is what I would call the new master connector because she just seems in the moment she has fearless energy that she just goes after and she she gets what she wants and she achieves it which is which is what we love about it. A ball. So, so, so let's so let's let's shift this more to you and talk yeah. talk about a little bit of your journey um specifically about what you love to do and and kind of let's build that direction up into this enterprise sales institute which I think is a great thing you put together and I think it'll help paint a picture to the Thrive Loud listeners about all this amazing stuff that you have and and who you are. 
Sound good? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. So um, my journey, uh, well, I think if I had to connect my journey to what I'm doing today, I think that the common threads from the time I was a child uh, in high school and then even going into college, one of the things that people will find about me is I was hyper, hyper focused. And I also like to bring people along and I like to encourage people um, to be courageous and to step into their greatness. So, um, you know, I've always had that kind of coach like um, sports kind of coach like uh, vibe about myself and energy about myself. And so that really worked very well for me in sales. Um, I think the reason why I was very successful in sales, maybe next to some of the counterparts, is that I definitely was somebody who uh, really told the truth in sales. And I really had uh, an honest dialogue, tough dialogue, but honest dialogue with clients. And I think that they always sensed that I cared. And I was very, very interested in them. And that if there was not a mutual benefit for both of us to move forward within a sales conversation, I was pretty up, up front to say, you know what, it, it's okay. We can, we can shake hands and part friends here. So um, there was a natural, kind of a natural dynamic for me. My family growing up, I mean, my father was an entrepreneur. My grandmother was an entrepreneur. And I saw them use their relationship skills and their people skills to really do business. And I kind of learned in a way that I think other people didn't. So I kind of had that natural tendency to be in service of kind of like a host or a hostess. Right. So, um, you know, I congratiate people in that way. And then while I was selling and after uh, it, I think it was like the late or the early actually 2000s, I ended up opening a recruiting business and servicing the educational technology space and um, uh, working with high growth and um, startup organizations to help them find sales reps and sales leaders. And then from that, Lou, I ended up, uh, you know, becoming a coach because I was getting a lot of people asking me a lot of questions and strategy questions. And so I think when you're a recruiter, you're dialing for dollars and your focus is on one thing. And if, if you're going to, you know, start talking to people about other things, you kind of, you, you need to have that service arm. So I decided to um, open the service arm of coaching and sales coaching and leadership development and career coaching. And then I, I, I felt like if I'm going to hang my hat, I need to uh, get certified. So I went out to the uh, Coaches Training Institute, which is one of the world renowned leaders in uh, leadership coaching. And I took my certification with them. And then I hung my shingle. And that's really where I kind of started to feel my most alive. Yeah. And uh, when I work with my clients, when I work with sales teams, I notice the energy in myself is different. That's not to say I wasn't in love with recruiting. I was, but I was able to see, like recruiting, you do see candidates go and be successful and then they become a part of the organization and they make great impact. But I get to see personal transformation right. with, my, with my sales teams and my clients. And I really did come alive more alive in that capacity. So I solely started to focus on efforts that kept me closest to um, B2B sales and sales organizations. And as a result of that, I met Mark Birch and uh, our relationship has blossomed into one where um, I am one of his uh, general managers for the Philadelphia Enterprise Sales Forum. And as we were involved in the forum and um, helping to educate salespeople on, you know, today's trends in sales and give them insights that's going to help them be effective the very next day, we get, you know, guest speakers that are operators, sales leaders and all kinds of things in there and talking about, you know, today's buyer's journey and how to be your most effective and, you know, best sales professional you can be. But one of the things I noticed while I was in there is that people still needed the you know, they love the topic and the intellectual aspects of the topic, but they often did want more, the how to. So how do I do this? Right. So I thought it was really important that um, the Enterprise Sales Forum provide a venue where people can actually get the skill sets and the proficiencies, 
proficiencies they need beyond just that two hour, you know, uh, meetup or forum as you were. So I created the Enterprise Sales Institute and that's how that got birthed. And what we do there is we work both on um, helping people with their interpersonal uh, skills and building their interpersonal competencies around being a better sales professional, um, the confidences they need, the self-awareness they need and mastering that you know, interpersonal dynamic and then going out and taking the tactical uh, stuff and really um, using the best practices of leadership coaching and sales techniques to help people be more effective and coach like in their sales, uh, in their sales, leading their sales teams as well as their uh, clients. Yeah. And, and this is great. I, I love that Mark Birch has been brought up to this. Uh, Mark was on our show and had a great quote. His quote was that your network is your net worth. And we loved highlighting that on the show. And what I found really impressive about that message is that he lives and breathes that. And, and I think what's interesting about what you do is that you live and breathe this dichotomy, which we both have. One is the mindset that you need to do to motivate somebody from a coach, but also give them the tactical skills that they need as well to, to pair that together. And that's who you are, this combination of this consultant and coach. Is there one side that you like better, the coach or the consultant? Honestly, um, so there's, there are really two different disciplines. And P.S., I'm going to shout out to Mark. That's not Mark's quote, I don't think. <laughs> he said it on the show. You're right. But he, I know he said it, but I think it was somebody's. It is brilliant. but. Um, I just want to shout out Adam. It is a, a he's Mark. First of all, is is brilliant, and I love working with him. I've learned so much um, just from watching him. He's he's um, he eats, sleeps, and breathes whatever he's saying he's doing. He's not just a talking head. He really actually does do what he says he's doing. Um, so so for for me, I think coaching and consulting are two different in this way, Lou. Coaching, you can't own the agenda or the outcome for the client. In coaching, you're really getting the, into the psychology of somebody's mind set and really bringing questions forward to them that help them understand who they are and help them transform into what they want to be. And sometimes you're uncovering um, you know, with these, with people, they're, they're the, the things that are limiting their, their behavior, their, what, what is stopping them? What is, what are some of the things that are keeping them from the things that they say they want to accomplish, but the behaviors that they're doing and the activities that they're doing, um, that's keeping them, holding them back. So that's what really is the coach part of it. That is something that I think pushing back on the client, letting them know they have the answers within them so that they can get some confidences. When I'm fleshing through questions with them, they have their aha moments as, it, as opposed to being my idea, right? So that I, I love that part of it is getting people that, that mindset that, you know, they can be courageous. They, they do have everything within themselves to take their knowledge and experience and be more courageous in their sales conversations. But there are times where the how to um, is just escapes them because their sales leaders maybe also don't have the interpersonal skills or the experiences of closing large deals. So they, they don't understand the psychology of the enterprise sale and who was all involved and all the buying personas and all the different things that you really need to understand in the sale. So I do love that piece as well. Um, I don't know how sometimes to disconnect that uh, no. because I always lean back into uh, the coach mode, but I do love giving people the power to say, look, these are the behaviors you need. This is the how to do it. Now you script it yourself and make it your own. Right. You know? I, I think it's, and it's the combination of the two. If you've been coached really effectively and you have the skill sets and the how-to paired with that, 
you really come to the table as a rock star. You really have the, that well-roundedness. And I think what's great um, about what you've uh, what you're putting together at the Enterprise Sales Institute is, 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 is exactly that. You're mastering the connection of getting to know people. You're getting to see coaching skills, but also helping to bring together some of those how-to things that are needed. And, and uh, kudos to you, by the way, for doing this, because this, uh, this is needed and something that everybody who, w- who attends is going to grow from. So, well, yeah, yeah. And, and, and here's the thing, right? Each one of the workshops that we have will always have that human-centered component in there because without that, without that being able to get in your head and all that head trash that goes on um, and uncovering the limiting beliefs as well as the group limiting belief that you have as a sales team, right? Um, If you can't get your arms around that, even if somebody does give you the process and the how to and the frameworks that you need to do your sales messaging, to do your prospecting, to manage, you know, and negotiate at every point in the sales. If you don't have your head and your performance mindset right and unlocking your beliefs, you know what? You, 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 you're never going to be able to do those other things. Right. You're not going to be able to connect and be able to close. I agree with you and, 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 and continue to be successful and to grow from that. So I'm, we're two people. Uh, what is it yeah, called? I mean, we, Preacher in we the saw. audience. We're, 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 what's the expression? You know, the um, I'm preaching to the choir. I, yeah. Both of us are just singing, singing the same song. I like it. I, yeah, I, just I mean, sing well, as well. look, you know, I, I we saw that happen in uh, some of the workshops that we did together. Yep. You know, we, we we would have people do the role play, right? And they got they got into their ro- cur- courageous selves, and they understood all that stuff. But then when the words came out of their mouth. They still, and when, and you had everybody raising their hand in the back, what resonated about this message? What doesn't resonate about this message as they were going through their role play? You could see where people got a little stuck. Yep. Right. They got a little stuck. It was, it was, it was a little stuck on the how to pieces. How am I messaging this better? How do, how do I sound when I'm coming off? Like not only my, verbal communication skills, but how, how do I look with my nonverbal communication skills and how, my self-awareness piece? Like, how am I really presenting my best self yep. authentically to this client where they're going to, it's going to resonate for them, right? And I think people struggle with that. And I don't think we, I don't think we train them very well at that. So that's why I love what we're doing with the Institute. That's awesome. So, so along the lines of getting stuck, and this is a good question, let's relate this to Donna. And this is a signature question I ask the Thrive Loud guests. Oh, you, you mean it's not just unique to me? I don't want to answer it then. Let, oh, well, you know what? You might have to because your answer is going to be unique. So okay. when you have trouble thriving, who do you turn to to get back on the thriving track? So to speak, who is your sensei? that helps you get back to that amazing thriving person that Donna Valente is each and every day. Yeah. I I'm going to take you back to a time when I was at Penn and uh, we were in a leadership class and we were asked, you know, to write our favorite modern day, you know, leader. Right. And everybody did the Jack Welsh's, the Donald Trump's, um, (laughs) uh, even back then that was long ago. And, you know, he was revered. So, um, you know, I did Harriet Tubman. Okay. And so I believe wholeheartedly that we all need a alter ego. And I think we have to carry a warrior spirit within us sometimes, especially in sales. And my alter ego, my warrior spirit is Harriet Tubman. And I'll tell you why. Because Harriet Tubman had the ability to connect with a variety of different audiences and influence their behavior such that they risked their lives to help her save and free people in a climate that was really impossible to sell to. And she had an underground um, network. She had a secret language. She uh, you know, managed to get people all across the Northeast corridor, uh, to help her while she was PS having her own children sold. She was hit in the head with a two by four. She was still enslaved. Mm. And I feel like if she was able to get up 
every day and do the work and the life work. Uh, and she did not lose focus on her purpose and what her values were, right? If she could do it, so could I. And I admire her so much that, that who, that's who I summons within myself when I'm feeling like, whoa, is me. Donna, t- to this point, that might be my favorite answer to that question. That was awesome. I like that. And, and, and I, I actually know that uh, one of my friends just recently read more about her. And, and I, I, you know, I knew all the basic stuff that we learned in school, but didn't know as deep of what an unbelievable story and success she, she really was. I know, I remember when they were talking about, you know, putting new people on the money in the U.S. currency, like faces and whatnot. She, why? she should be on the money. Right. And that's what people have been discussing, whether to replace uh, someone on the 20, uh, Jackson or something like that, whatever yeah. it might be. Listen, anyway, the, the, book, right. the book Bound by the Promised Land, right, is a historical, the, the woman was a professor at Yale. I it, mean, it, it's a brilliant, brilliant book. Uh, other people read it from a different perspective. I read it as, you know, from a modern day leader's perspective. Right. That this woman with no money, no money at all, no power in terms of the kind of power that we associate with most today's modern leaders, right? This woman um, did what other people couldn't do with absolutely nothing, Mm -hmm. as well as getting hit in the head with a two by four. And I mean that where she was actually maimed and couldn't speak for quite some time. She was an amazing, an amazing person. And I, uh, I value her contributions to the world. So when I'm feeling like I can't, um, I, I, summons, I summons her. That's great. And I summons Tony Robbins kind of people too, Oprah Winfrey's, you know, Deepak. I mean, all these, there's, there's so many, Mother Teresa, there's so many people that I can pull from when I'm trying to find a courageous heart. I like that. So what is, uh, Donna, what's your goal and vision for where you'd like Enterprise Sales Institute to go? What would be a, a big BHAG, if you would, for, uh, for the Institute? Yeah, so our BHAG is that we want to become uh, certified. We want to be the de facto sales uh, institute for sales leaders like a university would have um, a sales curriculum. And right. that's that's the goal for me is to get certified. Um, I'm trying to work with somebody now who has built an online institution before. She's got some really good um, connections and she understands how to build pedagogy in in a way that's going to have an institution want to put its stamp on it so that we can give certification so people can come and learn. And I, I want to I want to throw this out there about the institute and part sure. of, um, you know, not only does you know do we want the institute to help sales leaders and the participants become you know the best that they can be um, and be successful reps, uh, we also want it to be affordable, accessible, and transformational. Mm. Because right now a lot of these courses that people take. They're very, very expensive. And I, I don't, I think that if people want to go and learn on their own, I want them to have an opportunity to, to go somewhere where they can get a course and really learn and not have to pay an exorbitant amount of money to become the best they can be. And that's really, really important to me that's and great. to the mission of the, of the, uh, of the, of the Institute. We want to be able to reach the masses both in, in online and always instructor led online and face to face. I believe that you could do just in trying sales training. I do believe people should constantly read, but I am a firm believer that transformation happens in with human discernment and with practice and with being with cohorts where you're really going to learn. I I I I'm such an advocate for that. So that's the goal for us is to, you know, be accessible for people, affordable, transformational and um, give them the most pedigree content that they can get so that they can internalize new mindsets and behaviors and integrate them in with high-performing sales skills. 
It's great. Give us all the plugs on where we can find Enterprise Sales Institute and more things about Donna, anything in social media and any of those places. Um, give me uh, the spots on where yeah. people can find you. This is your chance to give the plugs, Donna. Yes, yes, yes. So right now we are focused on just, we have on Meetup, there's the Enterprise Sales uh, Institute on Meetup where we post a lot of stuff. I, I, I like that because it it has a way of aggregating for people and we get a lot of new members from that. So I, I found it to be a great, uh, better than a website in terms of getting traffic to. So that's, that's one place that has all our information. And then the enterprise sales institute.com we're rebuilding that right now, but it is up there and you can go see stuff about me and uh, my beliefs and uh, you know, things like that. And then obviously on LinkedIn, and on the Enterprise Sales Forum is where I'm very active too. I do workshops. We do uh, events twice a month, uh, once or twice a month in Philadelphia at WeWork. And, um, you know, we always have topics around around this, uh, you know, sales and business to business sales. So um, you can find me anyway that way. Twitter, Donna Valente is my handle. Um, it can get a little dicey on there with politics. So. <laughs> Not for the faint of hearts. Um, <laughs> so, so Donna, uh, two more. I'm giving you an extra question because this one I'm more curious about. No, uh, don't, don't yes. do this. Go ahead. Yes. I know what you're going to ask. No, 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 no. This is a good one. You are a Philadelphia native at heart and, and true from the area of Philly. Your favorite Jim Steaks. Thank you. Which one? Which one? <laughs> Which Jim Steaks. Jim. Jim. Okay. I like Jim's. I like okay. Jim's. It's on 4th and South. I figured I had to ask, you know, to throw it in there. Okay, and now we'll get to my favorite question. Your all-time favorite movie. No, I, I don't have one. Yes. I'm not, I'm not a good person to ask this. I, I, um, I, it's, it's because every, every movie has meant different things to me in my life, you know, or just different venues. So, okay, I love The Help just as a, you Great know. Movie. Yeah, that was, you know. But comedy for uh, me, like, um. I, I just have so many uh, comedies. I, the Moonstruck was one of my favorites. Uh, Snap out of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. I mean, as, and, you know, dramas would be like, you know, how many times can you watch The Godfather every time it's on? You know. I every mean, time. The answer is every time. Come on. Yeah. Now. And then, you know, Out of Africa. Like, there's just weird movies like Bridges of Madison. I don't have one. Well, there's no one all-time favorite for me. It's, it's crazy. I know. What, why? what is yours, by the way? Uh, one, there's going to be a special episode that airs that where I actually have five and I explain what that is. So you're going to have to, you have to hold out on that one. It's oh. a, it is a Thrive Loud special. Come on, Don. Or I could tell you off the air, but not, on, not while we're recording. So, you know. Oh, God. It's, you were like, you're like E.F. Hunt. You want to... <laughs> <wanna, wanna, laughs> when, when Lou Diamond talks, people listen. That's what we hope for. So we're like holding out like... Oh. Donna... Donna Valente, I knew this would be good and 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 chock full of information because that's what you're about. And I and I could not be happier to have you on the show. This is long overdue, and uh, long overdue for you and us. I, we're going to have to go to Philly and have and have cheesesteak, but maybe well, it's you're gonna, and that. you're going to have to maybe we'll do a cheesesteak night for the meetup, and you'll come and you'll be one of the presenters in February. If you can. Uh, maybe we could work that out. I could see myself uh, speaking at one of your events. I like that. Awesome, awesome. Donna Valente. Truly a pleasure to have you on. Oh, Bye -bye. thank you, Lou. It's good talking with you. And to all the Thrive Lab listeners out there, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Thrive Loud. Or find us on the web at thriveloud.com.